you're doing a very up. good job for the Koch brothers who, who support you and fund you. Incorrect. And old, Another you're, incorrect you're, statement. So Why don't you do some reading? That will deny climate. I can't believe you want to come on TV and just say black is white, up is down. You're wrong. You're not a climate scientist. Again, th Listen this book to the will experts. teach you how to think right, clearly Alex, about the uh, issues. Guys, we can talk about this. I'm going my time. Guys, we can talk about this and argue about this first. You just watched environmental activist and journalist Betsy Rosenberg called out Coke-funded fossil fuel shill Alex Epstein, and he was so mad that she called out his ties to the Koch brother, he decided to take to Twitter to not only post this L, but called her a liar. He writes, Betsy Rosenberg on News Nation is lying about me because she has no argument against the benefits of fossil fuel energy. Now, we're going to watch the whole clip, and as you're going to see, she has all the arguments and he has no arguments. In fact, in his book that he was trying to hawk on that program before she shut him down, he literally is calling for more fossil fuels. You heard that right. At this time in 2022, when the planet is burning, he's saying we need more fossil fuels, more coal. That's good. That's the moral argument that I'm going to make as a philosopher. Yeah. He's a Coke-funded philosopher. So, more about Alex Epstein from Accountable. Epstein is the founder of the Coke-funded for-profit think tank Center for Industrial Progress, which pushes pro-fossil fuel rhetoric and solicits donations to fund its anti-environment work. Again, the enterprise is a for-profit think tank. In 2016, Epstein's group was included in a Massachusetts lawsuit against Exxon for misleading the public on climate change and fossil fuels. Responding to the Massachusetts Attorney General's request, for his emails in the case, Epstein wrote, fuck off, fascist, and argued for Exxon's ability to spread disinformation. Epstein's dodgy history of anti-climate activism includes denying climate change, dismissing concerns over climate catastrophes, and pushing for increased fossil fuel usage, even claiming it is a moral crime to oppose the oil and gas industry. Jesus Christ. Charging exorbitant speaking fees, a usual rate of $23,500, and speaking to some of the biggest oil corporations in the country, opposing climate conscious flaring reductions and the Paris Climate Accords by American Petroleum Institute, providing pro-oil anti-climate talking points to officials including Texas regulators and Governor Greg Abbott following the Texas blackouts. So this individual is, I think, the quintessential corporate shill. He is a talking head for the fossil fuel industry, and that's how he made a name for himself. But yet he's claiming that Betsy Rosenberg is trying to smear him because she doesn't have an argument. This is corporate shilling parading around as pseudo-intellectualism. And it's clownish. And as you're going to see, he looks like a clown, hence why Betsy Rosenberg was easily able to slap him around whenever he brought up any idiotic fossil fuel talking wins. This is genuinely incredible to watch. Take a look. I cannot believe in mid-2022, when 99.9% .9 of all climate scientists, which I don't think you are, Alex, I saw that you studied computer science in college, doesn't make you an expert on climate change. I'm not a scientist either, but I believe science. And we have a problem in this country with eco-illiteracy and science illiteracy and this kind of just really distorting of the situation does not help. And we have no time to waste. I mean, do you not understand what's happening? I was just in Rome last week. The river is so low, you can, it's, it, you can almost see the sand. They declared a state of emergency. They call it state of calamity there because the Lazio region, which Rome is in, uh, is so dry. And they, they, a heat wave just went across Europe twice. We just went through two heat waves here while I was away. I mean, records are, are, are breaking and, and temperatures are melting. It's just beyond belief. We have 420 parts per million of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere right now. It's gone up exponentially quickly uh, compared to you know uh, what happened before the last 20 to 50 years. I mean, what about that is normal? And and by the way, every time you see okay, I weather, need some time to respond because it's a short second. Alex, Alex, I'll give you time to respond. Let's let Betsy finish what she was saying. And I just we'll get I to just you. want to say. Thank you. There's a signature. When you, see, when you see somebody in Oklahoma or Texas who's been hit by a tornado, a hurricane, a fire, um, extreme wildfires are a huge problem. When they say we've never seen anything like this, we've never, we can't prepare for this, we can't build back. Whole towns and parts of cities have been leveled like Hiroshima bombs from the, the storms on steroids that we've never seen before. What about that is a joke? Alex? Not very funny. Yeah, so, so I think- You're not taking uh, it seriously. Well, 
Well, I mean, intellectually, the way you're approaching it is a joke, and it, but it's not a funny joke. And so I, I mentioned at the beginning, you're ignoring the benefits of fossil fuels, which has caused an energy crisis. You didn't address that at all. As I've pointed out to you before, you're ignoring the fact that we're actually safer than ever from climate-related disasters. This is documented by nonpartisan organizations. You're evading this. The climate catastrophe movement evades this. It's just a fact that climate-related disaster deaths are down 98% over the last maybe century. On and fossil planet, fuels, maybe on another planet, not Earth. No, no hold Sorry, on. I get, I get to speak. Betsy, I thought I was going to get to Alex, speak. Alex, this is This is Betsy, documented. Let, I'm let happy Alex to finish. send you the the references in, in fossil future, it's very, very important for, for us to know that we're safer from climate than ever because of fossil fuels. The fact that we've warmed the planet one degree does not mean a catastrophe unless you have this primitive religious view that changes evil and hellish just because we, we caused it. The earth is a much better place. We're safer than ever from climate. And the only thing going wrong is the energy policies that you support are starving people around the world. All right, That's Betsy, very problem. quickly, about 10 seconds. I'll let you're, you you're doing a up. very good job for the Koch brothers who, who support you and fund you. Incorrect. And old, Another you're, incorrect you're, statement. So Why don't you do some reading? That will deny climate. I can't believe you want to come on TV and just say black is white, up is down. You're wrong. You're not a climate scientist. Again, th Listen this book to the will experts. teach you how to think right, clearly Alex, about the issues. Uh, guys, we can talk about this. Guys, we can talk about this and argue about this for some time. Thank you Dangerous lies. She did an incredible job considering it's really difficult to argue against people who are saying something that is so untrue, it's borderline delusional. Like what he's saying flies in the face of empirical reality. And just to kind of give you a little bit more of a sense uh, as to who this individual is, in that book that he was trying to promote, his core argument is that the negative aspects of greenhouse gas emissions will be outweighed by all of the good that fossil fuel causes. And we actually, quote, require more oil, coal, and natural gas, you know, just like the fossil fuel industry wants good little puppet. Now, he'd claim that he's not a climate change denier because he acknowledges that fossil fuels have warmed the planet. Uh, but you have to understand this is a new form of denialism. Climate deniers, the oil and gas industry has shifted the goalposts. They can no longer just deny the existence of anthropogenic climate change. So what they say now is, sure, climate change is happening, but maybe we shouldn't take this action. Maybe we should invest in more fossil fuels because that will eventually be the solution to climate change, or it'll come up with a fossil fuel type solution to climate change. It's basically advocating for pouring gasoline on a fire that's already existing when we have a limited amount of time, ignoring everything that the uh, scientific community has to say. And it's just, it's, it's laughable. Like this is clown shit right here. This is pro apocalypse shit right here that this shill for the Koch brothers and fossil fuel industry is espousing. And I've got to admit overall, even if Betsy Rosenberg did a really phenomenal job, I'm torn by these kinds of segments, by these kinds of debates. And I'm torn by the whole model of News Nation, which is a relatively new uh, news network to my understanding because they take a CNN approach, but just like they're more explicit about it. They go right down the middle. We are not left. We're not right. We want you to hear both arguments. And so that facilitates these types of debates. But the problem is that, I mean, these aren't all debatable issues like trans rights, for example, should they or shouldn't they be allowed to exist? That's not debatable. Racism, you know, some people are saying that racism, you know, doesn't exist any longer. Others are saying that it does exist. Does institutional racism exist? Do we have to have this debate? I mean, the evidence is on the side of people who are living in this reality. So when it comes to whether or not climate change is real and we should do anything about it, I think that having these conversations is inherently troubling because this is not a debatable issue. The debate is over. The question is, do we act or do we let the world burn so that way people like Alex Epstein and his funders in the fossil fuel industry can can continue to make lots of profits off of fucking up the one habitable planet that we have access to. So when it comes to issues like climate change, I'm sorry, but this is not a debatable issue. I don't think that any climate denier should be platformed at this stage in time because it's tantamount to supporting mass death of not just human beings, but all kinds of species on this planet. That's what this individual right here is advocating for by supporting not just the fossil fuel industry, but literally advocating for more fossil fuel extra extraction. So, you know, I get the appeal of 
these kinds of news outlets because you see CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, and you see how partisan they are. So you have these new you know, uh, competitors come along and, and they try to claim that they're not partisan and they're going to give you both sides, but not both sides are equal in this particular instance. You know, making an argument about marginal tax rates, that's a debatable issue. Talking about, you know, what we should do to alleviate, you know, the cost of tuition in the United States, that's something that's debatable. There are various solutions that you could probably apply. But debating whether or not we should take action to literally save all life on the planet, I just feel like that's not debatable. It's in humans' best interest, in humanity's best interest, to never platform shills like this. But still, you know, if you have the opportunity to speak and get the point across, as Betsy Rosenberg did, then I think that as lefties, as people who want to just have a planet... Sure, we should take, you know, them upon that opportunity, but news networks like News Nation to push this like neutrality when objectivity, facts is what matters most. I just it feels gross and I wish that they wouldn't do that. Don't give platforms to people who profit off of the destruction of Earth.